The bolter is the ultimate problem solver. Point it at something you don't like and it will make it go away. It's a fantastic gun in its own right, but Zealot can push it over the edge and make it utterly ridiculous by playing to its strengths and nullifying nearly all of its downsides. This build allows the bolter to mulch anything you can throw at it. Shooter clubs, packs of elites, and any specials unlucky enough to find themselves in your sights. Or more accurately, hipfire. On top of being one of the best kill feed generators in the game, it can deal a ridiculous amount of burst damage to bosses. Before going into the talent tree, let's talk about the gun. For this build, you're gonna want to build it with pinning fire and cavalcade. Pinning fire is a no-brainer power increase, and cavalcade is the best option for full auto damage for this build. Bolter crits and headshots are devastating, crit chance is well worth investing into. Cavalcade stacks drop all at once and drop fast. They will also drop if you start or stop aiming down sights, unless you're aiming in and out extremely quickly. The other blessings can't compete. The Bolter has a 1.0 armor damage multiplier on every armor type except against Scarapus and Infested. As a result, Shattering Impact only really does anything against the former, but Fury of the Faithful makes it redundant. A hidden property of the Zealot Dash is a buff that lowers enemy armor. For 3 seconds, it makes Carapace count as flak and flak count as an armor. Melee attacks only get this benefit for the initial hit, but ranged attacks get it for the full 3 seconds. This means that if you really need to clap some crushers, it's better to press F than to waste a blessing slot to make follow-up shots better against them. It's also worth noting that Shattering Impact can only improve kills that take 3 shots or more. If you one-shot or two-shot something already, it's doing nothing by definition. Cavalcade provides more consistent value against all targets. Surgical is extremely powerful, but this playstyle doesn't aim down sights much, and so it's not well suited for it. Inspiring Barrage and Glory Hunter are redundant. You're not going to need the extra toughness. You're a zealot, not a baby. You've got some options for perks. Flak is a no-brainer, but the second perk is up to you and how you gambled with Hadron. Unyielding is good if you want to clap bosses, Maniac is good if you hate mutants and ragers, and Elites is also alright. The Bolter comes with some quirks and downsides. It has reverse damage falloff against some targets, Unarmored being the oddest one, so being close to your enemies can mean missing out on potential damage, as well as the 5 meter arming distance for the explosion. Past 5 meters, Bolter rounds can explode in two different ways. The first explosion occurs if a round is stopped, either by the mass of an enemy or a solid object. This explosion doesn't deal any damage and will deal light stagger in a 3 meter radius. The second explosion happens if a shot kills an enemy and doesn't go through it. This explosion deals damage and light stagger in a 5 meter radius. The AoE stagger caused by the round exploding, even on the floor, can be used to stack pinning fire on trash before unloading on big boys. The Bolter is also really good at suppressing things. The round explosion deals suppression in a 4 meter radius, and killing a target deals suppression in an 8 meter radius. This, coupled with its staggering power, makes it excellent at stopping ranged units from shooting before exterminating them. The Bolter suffers from an agonizingly slow pullout time and an equally painful reload speed. You can cancel the reload by sprinting when the ammo counter for the magazine reappears. It fires full auto when hip-fired, and single shots when aiming down sights. It cannot fire single shots when hip-fired, and instead shoots a two-round burst when tapped. You can cancel this burst by quickly aiming down sights after the first shot is fired. This drops your cavalcade stacks, but there is a very niche tech you can use if you need to maintain cavalcade without mag dumping, and without aiming down sights. If you tap left-click at a very specific rhythm, every shot following the initial two-shot burst will fire one at a time. Make sure your bolter has at least 52 collateral. This lets you open bulwarks in a single shot. Aiming down sights on a bolter is never a good time. It suffers from some weird jerkiness, the recoil has a nasty reset, and the sights disconnect from where your shots are going all the time. 
If you're not already running it, the Crosshair Remap mod is a must-have so you can actually know where your bullets are landing. You can cancel the recoil reset animation somewhat by going out of ADS and then back in, but it still doesn't feel very good. With no way to deal with suppression, aiming down the sides of this thing is especially unpleasant. Now onto the build. The first two points are no-brainers. Anoint in Blood and Purge the Unclean. Anoint in Blood boosts your range damage based on distance to the enemy by up to 25% at and under 8 meters, scaling linearly until 30 meters, where it stops doing anything. Purge the Unclean is self-explanatory and always good to have. Then go down the right path, picking up whichever talents you prefer. Throwing knives are vital to this build. Having to shoot packs of elites, bosses, and every special would put a serious strain on the bolter's ammo economy. Thankfully, throwing knives are absurdly good at dispatching specials. They don't lose any damage over distance and will one-shot every special on a headshot, except the fat one. As long as you can land headshots, they're really good against anything that isn't carapace or unyielding. They also inherit the blessings and perks of your currently equipped weapon. If you've never tried uncanny throwing knives, it's a good time. Throwing a knife is also much, much faster than pulling out the bolter to react to a special. But that's not all. Throwing a knife as you pull out the bolter will let you skip the animation and start blasting quicker. On your way to the mandatory Darath be swift, which makes you immune to all stuns, not just melee stuns. You have to pick up Dance of Death, another vital tool to the Bolter Magdom playstyle. Like all unsuccessful dodge talents, it will activate upon dodging any attack that is in gunfire from heavy gunners, reapers, snipers, flamer fire, bomber grenades, or the beast of nervil vomit. Sliding to dodge a net, mutant, or dog will also work. Sliding against shooters and shotgunners will also work, but the slide needs to be timed. Crouching under a dog pounce also doesn't work. Then make your way over to the left side of the tree and grab Duelist. It works for both your ranged and melee weapons and will seriously juice the damage output of a crit bolter. Take Until Death and Holy Revenant to be immortal and pick up Fury of the Faithful and Redoubled Zeal. Make your way to the right and take Sustained Assault. From there you have two options. The first one is going all in on the crit bolter and grabbing Blazing Pied and taking Invocation of Death on your way there. In case you weren't aware, Invocation of Death is extremely overpowered. It triggers on each enemy hit with a crit and has no internal cooldown. Meaning a crit cleave into a horde can near instantly reset your cooldown. The uninterruptible effect from Punishment makes you stun immune like that Wrath Be Swift, but doesn't make you immune to slowdowns. Unlike that Wrath Be Swift, it makes you immune to interruptions when interacting with things. Grab Fury Rising and Righteous Warrior. Blazing Piety is pretty much always going to be in max stacks, and with Righteous Warrior it gives you a permanent minimum 30% crit chance. Aiming down sights on the Bolter also gives 5% extra crit chance. Each shot stacks up Cavalcade. At tier 4, that's plus 5% crit chance on your second shot, plus 10% on your third shot, plus 15% on your fourth shot, plus 20% on your fifth shot, and plus 25% on the 10 remaining shots. Those 10 shots have a massive 55% crit chance, assuming you don't drop Cavalcade. Your second option is embracing the fuller auto lifestyle and grabbing momentum. Pick up Inebriate's poise to keep stacks up. The attack speed Fury of the Faithful provides also applies to your gun and stacks with momentum. Momentum also provides a couple hidden benefits. It increases your dodge speed and your dodge distance by 0.5% per stack, and decreases your dodge reset time by 1% per stack. If you want to keep Invocation of Death, you're gonna have to sacrifice something good. Duelist, Purge the Unclean, or Thy Wrath Be Swift. You could also ascend to Greatness and drop Invocation of Death entirely, which gives you an extra 2 skill points to put into cool things. Grab the other defensive talent on the right side and get something nice for yourself. 
I'm a Desperation Enduro myself, but you can't go wrong with getting extra attack speed. Blazing Piety will lead to higher highs than Momentum, but Momentum provides a more consistent damage boost. There is also a forbidden third way. Giving yourself entirely to becoming heavy artillery, but it comes at a heavy cost. With Duelist and Dance of Death triggered, the Bolter becomes an absolute monster with some of the highest burst damage potential in the game. Remember to pre-stack Pinning Fire on nearby trash to maximize firepower. And as tempting as it is to blow your load everywhere all the time, it's sometimes better to drop Cavalcade and cancel your burst by aiming down sides. With a reload time as long as this one, you're going to feel every missed shot. And now you're ready to unleash the full potential of Darktide's heaviest gun. Turn Heretics into paste, surpass Metal Gear, and slurp up all the ammo. And as always, thanks for watching. Here are some example builds using both keystones if you feel like copy and pasting talents. But I recommend trying things out for yourself and seeing how talents actually work so you can make your own decisions. You'll never truly appreciate a talent until you know why you've equipped it. There's a lot in the Zella talent tree I barely ever use and that I didn't mention in this video. If you'd like to know more about those unmentioned talents, Cooley has published some really fantastic guides on Steam explaining how every single talent in the game works. I'll link them in the description, as well as his YouTube channel. I'd also like to thank Crab for being cool and helpful, and for trying his hardest to make Darktide a better game. I also stream Darktide both on YouTube and Twitch fairly regularly. I sound a lot less like a servitor when I'm live.